everyone, I'm Cheryl Fon and I'm with Artsy Fartsy Creations. I own a decorative painting business. And in this video, I want to show you this amazing finish I'm going to be putting on this bathroom wall. Now, you don't have to just do it in bathrooms. You can do this in your dining room, you can do this in your bedroom, or any wall in your home. But in this wall, room here, I'm going to be painting or actually putting on a product called um, Moon Glow Silver. And this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful finish. It has a nice shimmer to it, and I did a stencil design on here with a glitter of a uh, cherry blossom. So this whole bathroom is going to look like this when I get done, and I want to show you how I did that. So one of the first things I want to tell you is I got this product from uh, a company called uh, Chicago Institute of Fine Finishes with Kathy Carroll. She has some amazing finishes there. And I'm going to, in my blog, I'm going to put all of the uh, links where you can go directly to the product. If you decide you want to do this finish in your wall, it'll take you right there, okay? Um, I'm going to show you how I got started. The first thing I did in this room was I taped off all of the baseboards, all of the ceilings, all of the fixtures. I put paper down on the floor because I didn't want to get anything on the floor and, you know, make it all messy. So it's a whole lot easier if you do your prep first. And then what I did was I covered the wall in a light gray. I didn't make it look all pretty. I didn't put two coats on it. I literally just put one. I just wanted to cover up that dark green that was originally here. Now, I probably could have gone with a darker gray, which I probably should have. But regardless, when I'm done with this finish, it's all going to be covered up and you're not going to see it. So one of the first things I do is I put on the, the paint. And it could be flat or it could be eggshell. It doesn't really matter. And then I put on the... Um, moon glow finish over top of it. And this is kind of like a, a, here, let me show you, hold on. Let me show you. So this product is kind of thick. It's not like paint. See how thick it is? And what I do is I put this product on my trowel and I apply it to the wall that way. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. Just put it on my trowel like this. And one of the things I'm going to show you is when you're working on your wall, let me put that down. I always start from the left, from the right, and work into my left because I'm right-handed. So I don't want to start my, if you're, if you're left-handed, do it the opposite way. But what you want to do is you want to start on the, um, the right side and just put it on the wall like that and just kind of move it around. Don't put it on too, too thick, put it on thin. It's not gonna look pretty on the first coat that you do, but you're gonna go back and do a second coat. You're gonna do a skin coat over this and that'll cover that all up. So what you wanna do is work into the wall, not onto the product. So if I went this way, I would be literally starting on the wet and going in and I'm pulling it off and making chatter marks. So always go from the dry in, okay? And see how I'm doing this? I'm just applying it like this. And I'm just going in different directions. And you can overlap, it's okay to overlap. This product here is one of my interior decorator's favorite finishes to use because the one is very forgiving. If anyone were to ding or you know do anything to the wall, you can easily fix it um, with a little bit of this product just by using like an old credit card and, and putting it on there. So I'm going to work my way into the corner. Let me show you that. I can get over there. Let me show you this. I'm not dropping this. And I'm going to work right into the corner here. Drag it down. You just want to kind of move it in different directions. You don't want to go straight down or straight up. It's kind of like a new shape. You know. See how I'm doing that? I'm kind of working into my product. The beautiful thing about this product is when the light hits it, it actually gives it a beautiful shimmer. It's absolutely stunning. I've done this in so many different, I've even done this on ceilings, it's amazing. Because when you have it on the ceiling and the chandelier, the lights hit it, it just glistens, it just glows, it's beautiful. Beautiful finish. And this comes in different colors. So you can order whatever color you want. This happens to be in a silver gray color, 
which happens to be very popular right now. So if you're worried about like faux finishes, you see people say, oh, faux finishing is out because everything's all old world. It is not true. This is a very contemporary and modern finish. It all depends on the design you put on the wall, you know? So you can put any stencil design you want on this wall. I just happen to be doing this uh, cherry blossom that my client loves. See how I'm just making a little movement? Now don't worry if you have higher and lower areas. You want that kind of like a, you want to have some movement going on. I always think it looks so much pretty when there's movement. Now if you have, and if I see one happen, come off, I'll let you know. If you see like a scratch mark, that means something got into your product. And you can just go back over and smooth it out. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just applying this product in different movements. See what I'm doing? Just moving it around so you kind of give it some flow going. That's all I'm going to do on the entire wall. And then when I'm done, and this is dry, I'm going to go back over it with a second coat, give it kind of a skim coat to cover up some of the lower areas. And um, we'll do that in the, in the next video. Okay, everyone, we're back now, and we're going to put on the second coat. I've already done the whole room, but I stopped here because I wanted to show you how to work around the light fixtures and the tall racks and, you know, just different things like that can, can kind of be an obstacle and be in your way. These are just like tight areas. And I wanted to show you some of the tools that you might need for that. So, one is the trowel. We already talked about that, but... Let me explain to you, this is not a regular trowel. This is not one of those trowels you buy in Home Depot uh, for putting on drywall line. Notice how the edges are curved. You want a good trowel that has curved edges because if you get the ones that are pointy, it'll scratch your finish and it's much harder to work with. And these are super sharp on the sides. You can be really careful because you can literally cut your finger very easily with these. And the purpose of that is when you're putting on your product, it helps burnish it as it goes. So it gives it that nice shimmer. So you're definitely going to need a good trowel. And I'll have the links to all of this for you because I know they're hard to find. You can't really find these in um, the um, home improvement stores. The other thing you're going to need is these Japan um, scrapers, and these come in different sizes. This is my largest one. They come in a lot smaller too, but you're going to need this to get in some of the tight areas where this trowel handle won't work or the width of this won't get in. And the other thing I use too is this little, this is actually I think of like a putty knife, but it does have round edges. If it doesn't, you can always round those yourself too. So I have this because sometimes I have to get into like doorways or like in between the sink, I have to get in there. And this is a good tool for that. So you're gonna need different tools. I also use a little paint brush to get into the edges over here in the sink because my trowel wouldn't get in there. And then of course, your finger. You're gonna use your finger a lot in this. So I take my finger, I take the product and I'll put this on my finger like this and I'll go into, and I'm gonna move this over a little bit so I can show you. I'll go into my corners over here and I'll just use my finger so I don't have that white edge and I'll just smooth that right in there. So I have a nice smooth edge in there and it's covered. Otherwise you'll have a white line sometimes going on. The other um, thing I do with my finger, because I put the product on there, is when I'm working around fixtures like this. And I'll just take my finger and I'll just run my finger around the edge, just so I know it gets up into there nice and smooth. And I just kind of fill that in, just with a little bit of product. But I'm gonna go back in there and I'm gonna trowel it out as well. Now, as you notice, I got to about this far. Now I can continue using my trowel and I'll show you what I mean to get into these edges over here, right? So I'm going to work my way this way and get my trowel going, get my product on there. But when I get to the edges here, sometimes it's a little tricky trying to work. So what I'll do is I'll just put my product in there and then I'll work my way out. Yeah, and skim it over. So the second coat you're using is more of a skim coat than a heavy coat. You just want to skim it on there. This product covers probably about 300 square feet. So I always suggest that you buy some extra because you never want to run out partway through a job. So just have a little bit extra on hand. See how I'm using the scraper? And I'm getting in there like this. So I can get it nice and tight around that edge. And you can just pull it out the same way you do with your trowel. Now, I did 
definitely need this because this particular towel rack doesn't move. Some of them move up and down. This one doesn't. So I have to get in there and this trowel is not going to get in there for me. So I literally have to go in here with my gel can scraper and get up inside of there and then pull it out this way. And then once I get it out that way, then I can start working with my other tools if I want to work with my trowel. I just want to get it in there like that. The same thing goes with around the switch plates. Be careful you don't touch metal to metal because you will get zapped. It's not fun. I've been zapped a few times and it actually hurts. So see how I'm just putting my product on there like this? Now, I have too much product on this, so I'm going to take some off because I got a lot of it on the wall. So I'm going to take some of that off so it's kind of clean. And this way I can move my product easier. I'm just going to go in there and play around with it. You can just move it around. That's all you have to do. Don't be afraid of it. And just work it in. Skim it on there. And that's it. See how in here? Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just run my finger in there and get it in there. And then I'll just take my trowel and I'll skim it off. I also run my finger along the inside of my door jams here. So you don't have a crusty white line, you have it nice and smooth. And then you can just take your trowel and lightly go over that so you don't see your finger line in it dip that's going on and that's all I'm going to do. Then I might just take my, let's say, I'll just take my trowel again because I like working with the trowel. It actually does bigger areas for me. I only use the other just to kind of get in there. So see how I'm working this in? Here's what I'm going to do. I just have it kind of clumped on there and I'll work off of that sometimes and I'll just run that down into the corners but see, when you do that, what happens is this trowel is running up against it. And that's where I said that white line will come in. So you can just run the finger over it. And then you can just take your trowel and work it out. And bring it out like that. I'm going to work some of this off. Take some of this off because i got too much on there. And I'm just going to work it in. And that's it. And you can work it in different directions. See what I'm doing here? So you don't want to have chatter marks. This is a chatter mark. This is why we say when you're working on wet and you have wet on wet. See how it does that? That line, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a chat, we call those chatter marks. You don't want those on there. You want it nice and smooth. So just keep working it in. It's a little trickier doing the insides of these, but you can do it. It's not hard to do. It's just, you know, you have a little bit of patience with it. And all I'm going to do is add some product on there and use my Japan scraper. And then I'm going to bring it down like this and smooth it out. Pretty easy to do, but you're definitely going to need some of these tools to work with. Like I said, I will have these all on my blog. And if you're watching this on YouTube or something and you don't have access to my page here, all you have to do is go to artzyfartzycreations.com, which is A-R-T-Z-Y, F-A-R-T-Z-Y, and sign up for my blog. And I will have this video in there. I'll have all my resources in there. And you'll have all the links on where to get everything. So there's no guessing on where you're going to get it. Um, some of these products, like I said, like you can't get this product in the stores. You have to order this through um, the Chicago Institute of Fine Finishes. So I'll send you my affiliate link for that. And these tools as well, they're really hard to find. Sometimes Benjamin Moore might carry them, but lately I've noticed they don't have a lot of faux finishing tools in there. So this is all I'm doing is I'm going to go in here and see how I'm doing that. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. I have a little cough going on today. And I'm just going to go add this in with my finger. <coughs> and take it off. 
Okay, this is the last step in the process. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting a stencil on, this, on the walls. And this is a cherry blossom stencil. And I'm doing this in a glitter. And it's a, uh, there's four steps to mixing this. I'll put that in the blog because I don't know off the top of my head the names of everything. But basically it's just a thick um, paint mixed with a couple of other products. And I put this on my Japan scraper and then I apply it to the stencil and um, that's it. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing here. I'm just putting the stencil on the wall. I tape it to the wall and then I'm going to apply some of this um, product to my Japan scraper. And I'm just going to go up here and scrape some of this on. And I'm going to start from here because I want it to have, I don't want that stem to be in it every time I do this. You don't have to fill in the entire stencil if you don't want to. I want it to look a little more natural. So I'm just basically scraping this on and filling it in. It's like a skim coat. I also want to do a skim coat this on. That's it. And then very carefully take this off, lift it away from the wall so it doesn't smudge. And there you have it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep doing this until I fill it in. See how I like it. Um, I don't want it to look too veiny. I want it to look more like a cherry blossom. But what I have to do is I have to work in a, uh, an angle like this first because this product is wet. And I can't lay the stencil back over top of that because it will smudge. So basically I'm just kind of working in a random kind of way here. So I'm going to put this one over here. I'm not going to take that top one because I don't want that to stick to the wet part. And then I'm going to keep applying my product over top of it. So you're just going to skim that on. So I put it on, take it off. That's it. And I just put some on there, which I didn't want to do. I'm talking and not paying attention. So here's what I'm going to do. Two things you can do. You can just leave it there and then put some flowers on it around it later after this dries. Or take it off immediately. If you take it off immediately, you won't notice it. Okay? But I'm still going to add some flowers in here because I don't want that stem to stick out right there. So I'll just take some of these flowers and I'll put it on there when this dries. And I'm just going to continue around the room. It's a pretty simple process. Every once in every about five times I use my stencil, I wash it off because otherwise it keeps getting thicker and thicker. And um, it's going to be hard for you to uh, apply the product to the wall. Not only that, you don't want it to bleed through the back here because if it bleeds through, what's going to happen is when you lay this on here, you'll see smudges. So keep a little artist brush handy in case you have like a little smudge. I like using like this little angle brush and I can go in here and if I have a smudge like I do right here, I can just go clean that right off. See how I did that? I'm just going to go in and use my brush and just kind of wipe it off so you have a nice clean edge. I'm going to go pretty. And that's it. So I'm just going to continue this around the room sporadically. I'm going to show you pictures at the end of the um, um, the blog because it's hard for me to move this camera around and show you there's too much light coming in the room so it kind of you know fades out but also i'll have the one after pictures in the blog for you so i hope you love this finish and uh if you ever do it please let me know just get on on my website or you can uh, go to my facebook page which is uh creations by cheryl fawn and go in there and post some of the stuff you've done i'd love to see it thanks for joining me and have a blessed day